And hello, everybody. <laughs> There's nobody here because... Oh, to be back in the home studio. To be back in the home studio. Yeah, we're having a few glitches. The glitches were mine. What I did is I, uh, as soon as I, I, instead of hitting the camera button, I heard it's end video. So it signed us off. We had a whole lot of people on there. Now we're up to more of you are finding us. We had a whole bunch of people on. <laughs> and I hit finish. Operator error. And it end. And um, it's because I hit the wrong button. But uh, those of you who are here, thank you. Thank you for everybody. There were a whole bunch of you on at the other one. And uh, I'm sorry. I think we'll just kind of keep talking here and you'll all find us. Uh, like George is here. Thank you, George, for being here. Sandra is here from Southern California. Uh, Mike Carroll is here from Canada. And uh, everybody else is, uh, is on their way, I think. Should we, we just go. tell them that we had kind of a rattling evening because... Uh, a shelf broke and a whole bunch of glasses shattered all over. It, it would have made a video a few minutes ago. Uh, we were, I was getting a couple of glasses out and the shelf came off this little peg and it just, all these glasses All these glasses off. were just smashing everywhere. On the ceramic, on the... Uh, on the granite countertop. On the countertop. granite countertop. And then the tile floor. Glass after glass broke. So we are going to replace them with plastic. Yes, yes, so... This is a I rental. Think it's a good. This is a rental, and yeah. uh, we failed the test, so I don't want anybody else to have to clean up glass the way I've been cleaning up glass. So I hope, yeah, that was your second time. Yeah, last it, week it, I dropped a jar. Uh, so that's no fun. So because here in Florida we go barefoot all the time, right? Yeah. And then Bo, I blocked off. I opened a door in the pantry so we couldn't get in the kitchen. <coughs> Excuse me. He found a way around to it. The bathroom. He's a clever guy. Yeah, I he's know. a clever guy. He wasn't going to be kept from food. So I know there were uh, well over 100 of you waiting for the first round here, and I hope many of you now, it looks like about 60 of you, 63, it's growing, have found us in this stream. Uh, again, what happened is I hit the wrong button, and no sooner did the intro go than I signed this off. So Short hope, program. So Yeah, short program. I told That's you we I got to get back to cleaning up. You got to get class. So... Uh, we are delighted to see so many of you here. Uh, Regina is here from Toledo. Thank you uh, for joining Ask Us Anything tonight. Our regular Maureen Tweedley in Richmond, British Columbia is here. And Maureen, I read a story this week that said that British Columbia camping is closed to people from outside the province through the rest of the season. And I wonder oh. if that's uh, if that's true, if they're going to uh, change that or if they really expect that to be all camping season long. I hope not, because so many people are uh, would go through British Columbia on the way to Alaska, for example. And what it's happens heard Alaska, to them? Isn't it? Yeah. So I'm yeah. I'm very curious to follow that story and see if that's true that it's for the whole season. No one except British Columbia people are allowed to camp in their state campgrounds. So. Uh, I would imagine you could still travel through, and there's probably places to boondock. There's probably all sorts of spots out there. Our friend Janet Matthews is with us from sunny Michigan. Ah, that's good. The sun's out. That is good. And um, George. Janet, it is so hot and humid down here, you can't believe it. And uh, George is uh, here from Ireland. Uh, George, thank you for tuning in from Ireland with us. In North Carolina, our friend Tom and Kathy McAllister. Joe Lamb is here from Austin, Texas. Uh, Crystal Transport. Hiya, guys from the UK. Glad that you are here as well. Uh, Linda in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Uh, Linda gives us some applause. Corey's here from Toronto. And uh, there's somebody else from Canada. I got to see. Excuse me. <coughs> I knew that was coming. I knew I was going to sneeze. <laughs> when you're talking and it's coming and you're all saying, can I get these words out? <laughs> Maybe it'll go away. Well, it didn't. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Dan is there from our favorite, uh, the favorite city name of the week, Fancy Gap, Virginia. We love hearing that. Hi, D. I said Dan. I said D. I meant to say D. So we are still uh, on Okaloosa Island in Florida, where I think half the world has come this weekend. The beaches were jammed, uh, the six and a half feet apart. Three rows on the beach. Uh, there's a public beach not far from us here, and even in front of our condo, people renting short-term rentals in the condo are here. Um, everyone, Florida is pretty much reopened. Restaurants are open. Mm -hmm. uh, many other states uh, opening up as well. I know some of you watching us are in states where you remain under uh, uh, SA uh, 
stay at home, stay, S-A-O orders. Um, and we, um, we feel for you. That's a, a terrible way to be for three months. It's crazy. Um, so we're in Florida where things are, are pretty normal. I mean, you know, there's still people wearing, ga- you know, masks in the stores yeah. and social distancing, things we can all follow. And it's going to be like that for a long time. I think it is. I think it is. Uh, if you've been on our website lately, uh, rvlifestyle.com, you'll see lots of coverage. I've had several stories about what's going to be open this summer, what's different about RV camping this summer. So please go to the website and uh, and check that off. Uh, we'd love to, to uh, get you guys all up to speed with us. Uh, Timothy is in Wisconsin. John says hi from central Minnesota. Uh, George says, uh, love you guys. Say hi to Sand. Dr. Detroit, uh, are you on the Emerald Coast, Dr. Detroit? Because that's where we are. We're right here. Uh, I wonder where you're staying. Because we're right here looking at the Emerald Water today. Beautiful day. A little rough. Uh, uh, and the uh, riptides. I saw him warning about riptides out there. Or rip currents. Um, Montreal, Canada checks in. Andrew's back after a two-month trip to Ohio to care for our uh, grandson. And uh, uh, he's back in Massachusetts now. Terry's in Salt Lake City. Stanley in Fort Myers, Texas. Joe Woods with a comment. We're in Florida with our new-to-us Class C. Thank you for all your information. It helps us so much. Good. That's what we love to hear, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So if you guys have a question, uh, please type that all in caps. If it's a comment, like Joe just did, put it in caps. That way we can, as more and more of you come on and it gets crowded and more chat is on there, we'll be able to go. Thank you for the thumbs up. I'm seeing some of you give us thumbs up. We appreciate that. And we also want to use this time to uh, urge you to subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so. We uh, release videos all the time. New video went out yesterday. If you haven't seen it, please, as soon as this is over, watch it. It's on the space coast of Florida. And um, we were there just before everything shut down. And now, as this video is being released, everything is about to reopen. Kennedy Space Center uh, reopens, I think, on Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, there is a space launch with SpaceX, the Jetty Park Campground. I don't know whether that's going to be open in time for that launch, but it's in, it's preparing to reopen again. Uh, so the Space Coast is a very fun place. Go check out that video if you have not already seen it. No cruise ships to watch. No cruise Take ships off. to watch. And you'll see those in the video. Um, Maybe there'll be some kayaks. Uh, so that's uh, from Joe, uh, who's also in Florida. Linda, uh, after reviewing the upgrades to the Leisure Travel Van Unity, my husband was most excited about the pull-down towel bar in the shower. That is very nice. She says it's the little things. It is the little things that mean a lot. I was really pleased. When we, I saw that in the Wonder yes. that they had that nice metal bar that you could put something a little bit heavy on. Leisure Travel Vans released a new video this week on their website uh, of their new 2021 Ford-based uh, Wonder uh, motorhome. Uh, that's on that new uh, Ford Transit chassis for 2020. It's a beautiful chassis. We are really excited about it and anxious to get our hands on one as well. Um, but they're, they've announced that they're going to have lithium upgrades available as an option and uh, a bigger inverter. So obviously they're, they've heard a lot of feedback from folks who want more off-the-grid boondocking camping experience. They also announced that new all-wheel drive Ford Transit 178-inch wheelbarrow. Really a nice uh, chassis, and we're excited uh, to see it. Here's a question from Tom. He says, do you use the diagnostic code scanner for the Sprinter? Thanks for all the advice and the discount for RV buying secrets. Checking out dealers now. Uh, yeah, I have one of those, and I used it on the first Sprinter that we had, and uh, I don't have it anymore. I, don't, I think I still have it probably in a box somewhere, and it plugs into that little receptacle underneath the dash that all vehicles have now, and it would, it would diagnose diagnostic codes if your uh, Mercedes-Benz engine kicked back an error code, and you could see what it is, you could clear it, and I had it for... That, that first unit we have, and then I think even the second one, and I really didn't use it that much, and so I took it off. I still have it. You can buy them. They're 150 bucks, uh, but I, I didn't get a lot of use for it. Uh, he's talking about our RV buying secrets. That's uh, one of the books. All of our books I wanted to tell you are on sale this Memorial Day weekend. We're having a big sale. It goes till midnight tomorrow, 
And uh, big savings on whether you want to buy individual books or bundles like our three-part series uh, of Adventure Guides to Florida, uh, or you can bundle uh, all of them together. Um, there's some great prices, the best pricing we've had uh, of the year, and you can get that right there, uh, right where it says here, rvlifestyle.com slash books, and we invite you to try it. We better um, get busy and get some more books. We do. Made. We got about uh, five more we want to put out this year and another 10 next year. We really have a bunch. So uh, Jenna Mike from Canada would like to know what you think about adding lithium and solar to an older 2011 pleasure way. Is it worthwhile? Um, you know, it's a pretty big upgrade for you to go on an older vehicle like that. You know, it's a nine-year-old RV. So the wiring... It may be not uh, significant enough um, to handle the voltage that would be involved in lithium. You might have not have a big enough inverter to have that really pay off. You might have to do an inverter uh, you know, upgrade. In terms of adding solar, you're going to have to somehow get that cabling and wire from the roof uh, down into it. So it is a major undertaking. Here's what I would urge you to do. I'd urge you to call Battleborn Batteries and uh, ask them. And if you go to battleborn.com slash lithium, or no, I'm sorry, go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. That's a direct link to their page, rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. And talk to those guys, because many of their batteries, you can literally drop in and replace in existing ones. At, at a nine-year-old RV, you're getting up there. There's been a lot of new technology since your wiring went in for... I don't even know if you have AGMs on, on that old of, a, of an RV. So call those guys. But those are some of the issues that I think you'd find. And it may not be the best interest for you to go with, go that route because it's. Uh, I think it would require a lot of wiring additions, replacements, and stuff like that. Watching y'all with our dog, Cookie, uh, who is so funny, she, he says, goes nuts to see Bo and watches intensely the entire hour. Oh, I should bring Bo in. You should go get Bo. Bo's actually got a visitor. You want to bring Bo in? I'll go get Bo. Get Cookie. Get <laughs> Cookie out there. Bo's in. Bo has a visitor. And uh, we'll we see a, if his cousin guest. is here. His cousin, his house guest is here. So we'll, we'll let you meet uh, Bo's house guest, who uh, we're going to take with us to the dog park tomorrow. And uh, he's got a... Hello. There's Bo. Uh, Bo, you people want to say hi to you. There's Bo. Come here, Bo. Okay. Yep. He locked me out. Where's his buddy? Buddy. Okay, he doesn't need a buddy. We can't no. show the buddy. All right, so Bo's in with us now, which means you know what, because he's going to bark. He always does when, when we go on here. Bo. But he's there. Cookie's so he's looking for you. Yes. Yeah. We're, hey, Cookie. Where's here, here, Cookie. Can you see? <laughs> yeah. You don't know how to speak. You just know how to bark when you see yeah. something. All right, question from Ray. Lithium batteries are not an yeah. option on 2021 Wonder LL. Yes, they are. Is it a costly upgrade by a third party? No. Uh, wrong information that you have there, Ray. Lithium batteries are an option on the 2021 Wonder. Uh, they won't assemble them, I think, until they get the, the, all the chassis and all the stuff they're thinking, I think, after July. So it's about a month away before they'll build it. But you can order it now on any new one. So it is, it is an option. And uh, I would urge you to, it's always better to get something factory installed if you can. Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina is where Craig is. Hope to be on our way to South Dakota at the end of the month. Don't know what the up, uh, what you know. What the I opening. hope you can be too. Yeah, lots of people leaving. Uh, Les and Kathy are here. Uh, good to see you guys on. Sandra is here. Pam is here in Omaha. Question from Julie: What's your opinion of the quality of the various travel trailer brands? Uh, we're considering a Grand Design Imagine. Uh, what do you think of that? Grand Design is pretty impressive. We're probably a little partial to Airstream when it comes to travel trailers because you've wanted one since you were yeah, but a little girl. I don't know other brands. Grand Design, we've looked at. We've looked at uh, Lance. And, I know, and we but like I mean, Lance. I haven't traveled, used them. Yeah, we 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 don't. Well, we did. We had our, our first one. We had a travel that was trailer, a, a long Shasta. Time ago. <laughs> twenty years ago. <laughs> twenty years ago. Yeah, twenty years ago. Yeah. Um, so. I, I can't give you much, but Grand Design, I know, is a really nice unit. Uh, they make some of the big guys, so. Uh, but we're um, pretty much strictly motorhome uh, campers these days. And uh, I know Grand Design is a, is a nice one. It's got a great reputation, but I don't have any firsthand uh, information. 
Um, Shoshana21 says, Shalom from Jackie in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Edward, heard from another chat that could be difficult to get insurance on a non-certified RVIA RV. Could be an issue with some campgrounds. I don't know what on earth that is about. Oh, I guess you're talking maybe on a really old one that's non-certified. Edward, I've never heard of anybody checking my RV when I go into a campground saying, is this certified by the RVIA? That certification doesn't mean nearly as much as a lot of people think. It's just really a sign that the manufacturer pays a lot of money to the RV Industry Association, which is a huge trade group that spends millions and millions and millions on marketing. Um, so... Uh, but I've never heard of any campground uh, checking that. So now I do uh, regularly hear of campgrounds that will not allow people in old campers and old RVs in. Many times, let's see, we, I mean, some of them look pretty ratty. Uh, I noticed one, where were we the other day? At Sam's Club. A couple, there were two oh, yeah. really old, ratty looking ones camped there. And um, plywood for the door, plywood for the door, and uh, they had seen better days. They had seen, and you know, there's people who are one step out of being homeless sometimes living in those kind of vans, and that's what campgrounds, I think, are trying to um, rightly or wrongly uh, take care of. And that's, but I've not heard of anybody saying is that RVIA. There are a lot of people who are do it yourself building their own vans and, and campers, and uh, um. They wouldn't be doing that if that was the case. So I don't think you have to work on it. Linda says we both have nice tans. Well, we've been in the sunshine here for three months. <laughs> there is a lot of sun. You can't avoid the sun here. And Although we haven't even been on the beach today. We haven't been on the beach for three or four days. We get to the dog park. We go to the dog park every day for an hour yeah. or two. Yeah. Uh, and that was that was good. Uh, hi to Phoenix, Arizona. Boulder, Colorado is here where it's raining and Ugh. 46 degrees. Holy mackerel, that's cold. Could be warm tomorrow. Duane is uh, in Albuquerque, Paris. one of our favorite New Mexico towns. Question from Sandy. Did you see the introduction last week of the Leisure Travel Vans Wonder Rear Lounge? Yes, we did. We did, and we mentioned that earlier in the, uh, in the uh, show here tonight. Uh, greetings from Charles and Dayton. Um, and who else do we got? Uh, Question, do you think there will be electric RVs to be released there in the U.S.? No, never. I mean... You never say never. I won't say never, never, but not in my lifetime. Uh, no, people will always be driving it. There will be maybe, you know, uh, electric motor. I don't think so. I just don't think they have the power. It, it, there probably will be someday. Who knows what we'll see with... Uh, with with uh, vehicles in the nowadays, far out future. Nowadays, you can't say in my lifetime. Well, I can say it now. I can say it in my lifetime. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, there might be somebody who builds one as a gimmick, you know, but I don't see widespread use of that, at least not in the next 10 years. How's that? Oh, Is that you. better? I bet you. Okay, well, should we stick around for 10 years? Five we'll years. I bet you five years. I don't five, think somebody years. will do it for a gimmick. I guarantee yeah, it, but I'm it's not just gonna not going to say being. the masses are going to have them. No. But they'll come up with it. I don't know. Um, do you watch TV on satellite or over the air antenna while out and about? Pretty much just satellite uh, when we're out. We don't watch a lot of television. Honest, for somebody who does so much video, we watch very little. We did during the lockdown, I'll say that. The beginning of the lockdown. Yeah, we now we don't have time for TV. Yeah, again. we're back working hard again, putting out videos and writing on the blog. But um, when we do, it's, uh, it's satellite. I like... I have the I bought the option on our dish system. We have dish outdoors and we have the the little uh, uh, dish up on the roof and then we have the Wally receiver inside and uh, it, everything's automatic. It's very easy to get and we bought the little option the local option so that we can call them up and say, hey, we're in this area and we can watch local news as well on it and really really enjoy it. Haven't we? It was really mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, Sam. Fairbanks, Alaska. Denali was great yesterday. I bet Denali is great every day, Sam. Lots of animals out, but no people. Uh, no, so sad. The valley is a ghost town. Keep up the good work. I mm. uh, wish we uh, we could have tagged along with you, Sam. That's an awesome place, Denali National Park in mm -hmm. Alaska. Um, okay, there's a Mike and Jen from Canada. 
we have a 2011 pledge away, and uh, that's the question we already took. And we we uh, we basically think that solar and lithium for really older coaches can be very tricky and worth Costly. and require a lot more in the upgrade Costly. thing. So, uh, but as I said, talk to the experts and uh, go to rvlifestyle.com/lithium. Talk to the people at Battleborn and see what they think. What's your plan for accessing water and dumping when boondocking? Uh, well, we can carry enough water for us for four or five days, and then if we have bottled water with us, we can we can suck that into our tanks as well. And we move a lot around a little bit when we're we're boondocking. So four or five days, we're going to go somewhere else, and there's always a place to get water. We've had water. We've filled it, borrowed it from filling stations, and we borrowed it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can I borrow some of your water? <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, We've had people give us a, you know, uh, yeah, hook up your hose to the thing, to the pump out and back. And we've done um, campgrounds. We've gone into campgrounds just to just to get the water, and um, so it's not a problem. Uh, but but normally when we are going to boondock for several days, we will top it off with water, and we it lasts three, four, five, six days even without uh, as long as we're not wasteful. And we take showers in ours too. So and it's amazing how efficient those showers are. We, the secret to the shower, and that's something that you've only seen really in relatively newer RVs, but we really love this uh, Truma AquaGo uh, instant hot water heater. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Yeah, you're not wasting water, waiting for it to warm up. Yep, works really good. Um, and then, you know, you get wet, you soap up, and then you, you rinse off. Another question about the Ford Transit. Uh, what's going on with the new PleasureWay Class B Plus? Last I heard, they were not making B pluses. They were only doing Bs. So I don't know what their status is right now. Uh, Ohio went to a Bob Evans today, Shirley Benoit, and uh, for breakfast, no condiments on tables. Uh, your paper menu is also your disposable placemats. Mm. If you need salt and pepper, you have to ask for it. And yes, the waitress wears a fat face mask. That sounds excellent. But they're open, Shirley. That's yes. awesome. I, I, and it bothers me when the waitresses aren't wearing face masks. I gotta say. Yeah, but I think most of them, most of them are, aren't they? No, I haven't seen a lot of it down here. Yeah, well, we haven't been eating out. So. Well, I drive past. You yeah. know, I can see enough of what's going on. Yeah. Here's Rose from Massachusetts, where the campgrounds are finally open. We're taking our maiden shakedown trip this week, and been looking forward to it for a long time. Good for you, Rose. I'm so glad to hear that it's opening. Linda reminds everybody to give us a thumbs up on this video. YouTube Thank loves you, it when you give us those thumbs up. It helps in the um, in people finding us. And um, again, we also please ask you to subscribe as well to the RV Lifestyle channel here. Um, I think camping doesn't start until June 6th, she's talking about. I'm not sure who she's talking to. Rose back there about Massachusetts. Uh, I don't know. Hey, Steve Biddo, our buddy, he gave us a... Where is it? He gave us a uh, super chat. Steve, you're too generous. A $20 super chat. Woohoo! From the Poconos, just bought the seven book bundle. Uh, it's on sale. Yes, it is. Thank you, Steve, for telling everybody that. Uh, he's headed to Hickory Run State Park tomorrow. Great for you, Steve. Uh, there's that list to get those books. They're all on sale this Memorial Day, and we invite everybody to please check those out. Uh, and um, there, it's a great discount, but it ends at midnight tomorrow. So please give it a try. Thank you very much, Steve, for that uh, super chat. We really do appreciate it. Dear Mike, I'll give you 50 bucks for the old Sprinter Diagnostic Box. Send me an email if interested. Uh, hey, um, I don't even know where it is. It's up in Michigan someplace, so uh, it's buried away. <laughs> so maybe I'll get it out and try it and see if I like it again. Uh, yes, on the BC parks, but private parks will probably... Uh, receive visitors uh, out of province. So uh, check that. She says the rules are changing. Back to that earlier question and concern we had about people wanting to go to Alaska this summer, having to pass through British Columbia, and British Columbia not allowing people who are out of the province to stay in their provincial parks, which isn't a good idea. Uh, Jennifer, is Mike obsessing over the gas 2021 Ford Yes, Wonder? he is. Tandy bet me $20 Michael trade the Unity for one. <laughs> I think you're right on. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're, this is a developing situation. 
uh, greetings from Boston. Uh, I bought the seven day trip bundle. That's one of our books that are on sale at hold. And that's it. The, all of them are on sale. Uh, thank you for saying it's an excellent value and well-organized, happy with the purchase. And, and for those of you just watching, we don't know who two chickens is. That's just an unsolicited recommendation. I mean, it's, it's a no brainer, really. It's, it's, uh, you know, seven, eight, eight different books now that we've done these seven day uh, trips on, and we've got more coming. We're really excited. We were just sketching out the other day, talking about a couple more we want to do this year, adding to the ones we'd already planned. So many more coming. Uh, two chickens is in Boston. Yeah, that's where he is. Uh, it's easy to replace an absorption fridge on a 12 volt. Is, is it easy? Um, with a 12 volt, I, I don't know. Uh, probably not too difficult. I, it's beyond my pay grade. So I'm, I'm not a mechanical guy. Uh, so I don't know. If I was going to do that, I would take it to a, a dealer or a place I know. There's a place up in Michigan I know that works on refrigerators and RVs. So it's probably not... Uh, it's probably not any big deal for an RV service guy, or I would have an RV service tech. I'd call a mobile tech and have him come and install it in. Um, so that's good. Um, let's go through and look on to some more. Any of you, if you have a question, put it in. You know what I'd like to know real quick from everybody is, where are you? Are you camping this weekend? Um, just tell me you're camping and where, or if you're home and where. And uh, I'd love to get a sense of how many of you are out able are able to be camping right now on this traditional start of the summer. Uh, I think quite a few people are out there. I noticed a lot of RB, RVs here in Florida that we're traveling. On average, how long does it take you to edit a video and what software do you use? I allocate, I start the, I release my produced videos every Saturday morning. I start that process, uh, really the editing process on Wednesday uh, I edit Wednesday afternoon, most of Thursday, and most of Friday. And then I finish it, try and finish it um, Friday. You know, Friday afternoon. So it takes it takes a while. And some of them take longer. Some of them are, are a lot longer. But uh, the one that, that I just released yesterday that you saw, that you can go see on the Space Coast here, uh, we started Wednesday and we finished it Friday. So that's, uh, that's something. And I use Final, uh, I use, um, I used to use Final Cut Pro. But I use uh, Adobe Premiere. Um, that's our uh, editing software that we use, and I edit it all on a on a um, MacBook 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro. I have a um, a post I have been working on because everybody I get questions like this a lot, and a lot of people also want to know about what do you use for vlogging? You know, video blogging for video. So I have a long post on all the gear I like, and if that's something that you'd like. Let, let me know in the comments as well. And I, I put that on our rvlifestyle.com website. But uh, I, I did it. I, it's a long post, so uh, I'm happy to, to share it. I just want to make sure people want to read it about our vlogging gear and the stuff we carry and, and all that stuff that we use. Um, comment from Charlotte. Cookie sends sheepdog hugs back to Bo. Yeah. Bo's sleeping. He yeah. came in here and now he's collapsed. Uh, she'd like to meet him at a puppy park someday. That'd be fun. Bo has, uh, has not, uh, oh, thanks for the greeting. It was great. She recorded it with her phone. <laughs> That's great. Bo goes to the dog park every morning. And even during the lockout, our dog park here in, um, in your Okaloosa Island, Fort Walton Beach, was open. And it was, it was great. It was, it was really fun to have. Uh, Road Trip Buddy wants to know what's for dinner. We had uh, grilled chicken and... Uh, Hot dog and hamburger. Yeah. We had a feast. We had a picnic. Yeah. With yeah. some friends. It was uh, it was pretty good. Uh, I've gone to Burning Man out west many times in a tent with a, a, a luminette over top to shade. Ever see an RV do the same in the southwest for boondocking? Um, I see people boondocking all the time, and uh, I see them in an RV. Uh, you, you know, we love Arizona. We love to boondock in Arizona. We just did a couple of videos just before the shutdown in February on uh, Quartzsite, camping at Quartzsite, and then camping on some BLM land down by Yuma, Arizona. Uh, there's lots of places to boondock west and uh, out west, and it's probably one of the reasons that we love the west so much. And I have, I have seen people with uh, the tents, and they make shade. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Christopher... 
Anything new on the new Pleasure Way? Okay, uh, we don't know what they're doing with Pleasure Way. They haven't, at least if they have, I haven't seen their announcement, so I don't know. Don't don't know. What's the largest RV you've driven? Class C. What we have right now. Yeah, we have no real interest in an A. Uh, not that I couldn't be talked into it, because I could be talked into just about anything, but uh, Jennifer, Jennifer has no interest in an A. Uh, we are too mobile for anything bigger, and even a big fifth wheel. We really like to get out there. We like to move around a lot, and uh, this Class C is right at the limit in terms of size uh, that we have. Uh, that we, I, I don't see us going any, any bigger than what we have with the Class C. Uh, how are you guys doing? Are you uh, staying, sheltering? I don't know what STO is. Staying, I don't know. Are you st- it doesn't feel like there's anything wrong where we are in the panhandle. I mean, life seems very normal. I mean, I wear a face mask when I go to the grocery store, and uh, I have gone to the gym the last six days, and I take my mask, and if I'm all by myself, I take it off, and if I think I'm close to people, you know, I have to look at the ceiling fans, and I just have to look at everything and think, and if I'm uncomfortable, I leave. But um, I'm very happy to be back at the gym, and that's a dangerous thing that I do. It is a dangerous thing. It is thing. a dangerous thing yeah. that I do. And, and but it's pretty dangerous living with me if I don't. It's really dangerous, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, how much noisier is driving in a Class B compared to a truck such as a Ford F-150? I think a Ford F-150 is probably quieter. Uh, Class Bs tend to be noisy. Everyone we've had, and we've had six different Class Bs uh, over the years. All of them are noisy. I would say our larger Class C... It's quieter. It's quieter, and I'm anxious to I think see. It's hard to talk to each other. Yeah, and I would like to see what I, I'm anxious to try this new 2021 uh, Ford uh, on the 2020 Ford Transit. You are Tennessee. even getting me curious is to see what's different from the wonder that we had for two weeks that we yeah. we drove. Yeah. Uh, are you here in Florida or Michigan? Is everything okay back in Michigan? We're in Florida. We are We've in been, Florida. We are right here. At uh, Okaloosa Island, Florida, which is in the Panhandle, um, and uh, j- I, if I understand right, just uh, the Detroit area was hit hard in Michigan, but the rest of the state, I think, you know, was fine. You know, not much. I should never say fine, but you know, not that badly hit. Yeah, uh, Michigan is still locked down. Uh, locked down, basically, and a and lot of a, controversy. There was a mutiny today. Was there today? Yes. Oh, yeah, one yeah. of the little towns. I saw and that. And it's a lovely little town that we've even On considered Lake Michigan. Like, that we would like to live at. I mean, I love this community. And they all and the local shops defied the governor, opened their stores for business. Because and, they're tourist towns. You know, and, this is uh, killing them. Oh, my gosh, these people are dying. They're dying not of the disease. I should say they're killing they're me. They're dying. They're killing these people. You know, you're, these small they, business people. You can't afford to go without income for three months. And, and, and uh, it's just terrible what's happening. Okay. You have to trust that people are going to wear masks and social distance. No, it's been tough in Michigan. I mean, the police department and the whole community, the whole city, decided that they had to open for the sake of their town. Back to um, uh, the question about boondocking. Jane, uh, water supply, she thanks us for that, but what do you do about dumping? It's the same thing. You can find dumps. They're out there. Yeah, and, uh, and it's just the two of us. And we don't have to dump the black tank for five, six days. It doesn't, it doesn't fill up. So that's a long time to stay in one place, at least for our don't style of camping. App? That shows you, yeah, it's on many apps. You can find many apps that'll tell you where dump stations. But you find them I in mean, municipal parks. It surprises parks. you quite often where there are yeah dumps that you wouldn't expect. Many little towns have it because they welcome RVers. At least. Water is harder to get. Clean water yeah. is a little harder, I think, than finding. Dumps. But it's always. But it's there. Know, yeah. And so, and even, you know, we've gone to KOAs where we've said, hey, uh, we're not staying, but we're going through. Can I dump for five bucks? And uh, they've let us do that there at a KOA. Many truck stops will let you do that. Flying J loves. It's just never been an issue for us, but we can go for five days or so. And then we're moving on to someplace else. And we always, uh, then we'll find a place to, to empty it. We're a little ADD. Have you guys been to Stubby's Seafood Shanty? Oh, too much. I can actually see Stubby's Seafood Shanty <laughs> right from this window I'm looking at. If I turn this around, 
It's right. It's maybe a quarter mile at the most down the, the road we're, out in front of our condo. We're getting kind of sick of their fried shrimp. I need Dewey Destin's fried shrimp. We love Dewey I Destin's like the one fried in Navarre. shrimp. In Navarre, but the um, but the Stewies here. This is a pretty good. I like their shrimp. Yeah. I mean, we were the only ones who went there when we were in lockdown. Now they've got people lined up for a block. Was it yesterday that we got? No, the night. The other night, when Friday Friday night, night when we cooked the uh, cauliflower pizza that was so bad, (laughs) I just said, I'm not eating that. So we call up and we say, hey, we're on a takeout now, like we've been doing. Oh, no more takeout. You got to come in person. And they they were jammed. How quickly they forget that we were there (laughs) Uh, when nobody else was. Best fried shrimp dinners or plates that we found is at uh, Dewey Destin's. In Navarre, the one in Navarre, not the one. There's two of them in, in Destin itself. But it's all family. Yeah, lots of questions about this uh, RL Wonder van uh, from Lisa Travel Vans, and I've answered a couple of them uh, Friday night and several already this night. It's a great vehicle. I'm really anxious to see it. And yes, as you can probably tell, uh, if I was going to trade in and get a new one, that would be the one. And I'm a big advocate in getting new RVs as often as we can so we can be familiar with all the technology and answer your questions. And You've got you know, to justify it. i got to justify it. And i got to find out, you know, can I, can I trade it in and at a reasonable uh, rate, you know, pay off the, old, the other loan so I can get a new loan for this. You know, I mean, you know, financing is a deal. So, but yes, it's a really neat unit. We've, I'm very impressed. I think that the transit chassis is going to be uh, equal to or very close to being as popular as the uh, Sprinter is, um, primarily because uh, Mercedes Sprinter has done, uh, shall we say, uh, a less than uh, happy job, a less than satisfactory job of supplying the manufacturers. Everybody loves the quality of the Sprinter, but they're not doing a very good job of getting the, the manufacturers who then upfit these sprinters, uh, getting them supplied. Ford Transit, we think, will will be a, a game changer out there. Um, ever consider uh, having a Class A or an Overland Expedition RV from Edmonton? We, no, you know, they're too big. They're just too big. And uh, the Overland Expedition would be fun, but we can do a pretty good overland expedition, at least for our, our, our to satisfy our needs, just boondocking in our Class C. Uh, and they're you know, extremely expensive. The Class A's are, um, they look luxury. I mean, it would be nice to have like a washer and dryer, but they're really meant to stay in one place for some time. We don't stay. Um, four or five days is the longest we stay in one place. We may only go a few miles down the road, but we like to be more mobile. I know one woman who had a Class A, and for years they would drive from Michigan down to Florida, and then finally, she said it, the price of gas got so pricey that they just bought a place in Florida because they weren't going any place other than Michigan to Florida. All right, a few minutes ago, I asked everybody where you were and what you're doing, and uh, let's uh, take a quick look and uh, and see where everybody else is. Uh, Deborah says, uh, camping's in her driveway. <laughs> Good for you, Deborah. Uh, Sandblaster is uh, Orlando. Orlando. Jeffrey is home, waiting for two weeks from now to go out and about. Mm-hmm. The Floros are in a private park in Columbus. Uh, our campgrounds open this weekend. Okay. And, uh, this, somebody from is home. When boondocking, where do you dump your tank? Just answer that, but. You Lots can, of places. Got uh, an app. You can find places. It's not as hard as you think. Yep. Uh, Simple answer is just get on a freeway and find a Loves or a Pilots. Almost all of them have dumps available for five bucks. If you're a member of Flying J, I think they'll let you even do it for free or even even or a discount. Uh, Stanley is home now, heading to Ohio and Indiana for the summer on June first. Can you get a camping van with no propane, asked Gary. Yes, you can. Mm-hmm. Several manufacturers will allow you to uh, avoid the, uh, you don't have to have, you have a diesel generator or no generator uh, or a gas generator. Uh, you can uh, have a induction top cook so you don't have to have the propane and your heater can be electric. Uh, or, um, you can get an Aldi heater, which will sip power from your engine. So there's lots of options. And you don't have to have propane. You don't have to have it if that bothers you. Um, so that's that's good. 
Um, did you shave your mustache? I'm camping in my yard in France. I've never had a mustache. I was confused. Got, got I think you're thinking of somebody else. Somebody Not me. Else. I've never had one. I've always kind of wanted one, but uh, I, I never have had one. Uh, Deborah is camping in her uh, driveway. Uh, Dennis is home in St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. Anne nice is in Longmount, Colorado. McDillie's is at our house in San Francisco this week, heading back to Ocala House next weekend, and his Class A is still parked. Uh, Bill is in Western Maryland. Uh, Ann is home in Colorado. Uh, there's someone in uh, uh, Finger, Finger Lakes. Lakes, New York. Campgrounds in New York open tomorrow, and they're heading to Yellowstone and Teddy Roosevelt National Park. Oh, you're going to have so much fun. Uh, that's great. That's a great mm -hmm. trip. Uh, Linda made reservations today for Army Corps of Engineers at St. Louis South for next St. Lucie South for next month. We've missed our camping trips. Mm -hmm. uh, they're home in Sanford, Florida, and their reservations did get canceled. Yeah. Dennis, St. Augustine home. Dan, Dan is in Idaho. Lori's staying at Lazy Days. Need a, just needed a couple days out of the house. Right, you do. You, yeah. You have to get out. Linda's going to try and go to Columbia, Missouri in two weeks to visit her daughter. She's taking our Shamrock Hybrid to stay in, and we'll be using our bathroom at the rest stops. Mm -hmm. That's why. There you go. That's why so many people are buying RVs. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mary Ann says, um, San I'm in the San Francisco Bay, Bay Area. Area. Crazy here. Don't know if we'll ever be open up again. We had a nice protest in Sacramento yesterday to open the states. I saw the coverage of that. Good luck with that. I hope uh, I hope things change there. That's uh, that's going to be. I think so many people are just going to open up and just do it because <laughs> people. It's been a long time. Uh, he's home now, planning a trip to a Georgia State Park in a couple weeks. Georgia's been open now for about a month. Most of the places open there. Mm -hmm. If you're buying your books, we download on two different devices. Wife uses Fire and buy, me and iPad. Uh, I think so, yeah. You'll just have a copy of it, and you just would swap it with each other. Uh, Sharon is mooch docking for a week in Sumter, South Carolina, at my dad's house. It's their first trip of the year. And I bet your dad's thrilled. I bet he is, too. Uh, Crystal, I thought you were going to be in San Augustine this weekend. No, but we will be in the Jacksonville area in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. We'll be up that way. Not sure where we're going to stay at this point. Uh, Doe, I'm a full-time in a campground in Fancy Gap, Virginia for a month. I love that, D. That's mm -hmm. a great Fancy great Gap, night. Virginia. We need to go there. We do. You keep checking in. I'm going. To, mm -hmm. I'm going. Um, Thomas would like to see the blog on the video gear I use. Uh, well, Tom, look this week. I'll post it sometime this week on the RV, uh, RVLifestyle.com. Do you think there'll be much travel to Alaska with Canada and the U.S. border closed and potentially extended longer? Mm. I think it'll have a big effect on it. Uh, I did read a story that Canadian uh, customs are certainly letting people through if they say, hey, I live in Alaska. I'm a snowbird. I was out for the winter and I want to go back home now. They're letting them through. And I'm betting that in British Columbia, uh, as Maureen said, there will be private campgrounds that are open. So I don't think you are prohibited from coming into the province or going through, if I'm reading it right, Maureen. Um, I think it's just staying in a, in a provincial park that they've limited. So I'm betting that that changes over the summer because a season-long ban is, is pretty, pretty, pretty austere, pretty strict. Um, we'll be camping at Cape Hatteras, says Kevin. Uh, outdoor pool will be open, lots of sun and bike riding and walking on the beach. Sounds perfect. It does. Well, folks, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this thing really quick because, uh, I want to, uh, to sort of end this. We, we've, we've got, uh, some, uh, we, can, we got some friends that are visiting and we want to say hello to them and, uh, Frankly, maybe go for a little walk on the beach on this Memorial Day weekend. So we're going to uh, we're going to cut this a little bit short. Maureen has a question. She says, "I know you have automatic levelers now, but what did you use on your previous Sprinter with dual real rears? We use those little Lego blocks that you had 
he never could get quite right, but you drive back and forth and up and add one, then you have to go, you know what that's like. The automatic levelers, you push a button, and uh, and that is that's just such a great option. I love it. Yeah, it really is. Uh, so I'm going through. Uh, Michael downloaded the uh, guide uh, bundle today, ready to hit the road. Thank you, Michael. Again, uh, if you didn't catch it earlier, this special sale that we're running for Memorial Day on all of our books, different bundles, different pricing, but all of them sharply discounted for the Memorial Day weekend. You can get it at that address, and we invite you to go and, and do that. Uh, it, the discounts end at uh, tomorrow at, uh, at midnight. Uh, hello from Oregon. We're home. Never go camping on holiday <laughs> You're weekend. You're a wise man. We are retired and can go during the week. Wise yeah, man. Yeah, it, it, that's the same for, like, we haven't been out on the beach in two nights. We're going to sneak away in a minute, but it's just so crowded. It's too crowded. Yeah. And that's great. We want everybody to enjoy it. So we'll, we can go tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday when they all have to go back. Okay. Oh, this is a good question. If you had to pick two national parks, which ones would you select? We're headed west in August. Can't make a decision on national parks. I'm leaving it with you. Glacier National Park. That's this shirt. Yellowstone National well, Park. Well, that's my favorite. We yeah. got to get out of our rut. We're going. I know. We keep going back yeah. to both of these parks. Yeah. We love them. We are them. in a rut. And, we need to and, go new places. Well, we also like Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Mm -hmm. We love uh, Grand Canyon. We like that. We tend to go to the north side, the North Rim, which is a little quieter, a little cooler usually too. Um, we love Saguaro National uh, Park in uh, near Tucson. There's just so many places to go. But um, my favorite, Glacier, and Yellowstone. Uh, so uh, you just can't go can't go wrong with that. Uh, well, listen, you guys, uh, thank you for being here. And I know there's a bunch more on and you're asking questions and we're ending a little bit earlier than we normally do, but it's a holiday, right? And I got to uh, go clean up glass. Oh, yeah. We got to clean up the glass before, while it's still light enough that you can see. So um, hope you'll, uh, you don't mind us getting out about 10 minutes early. Wherever you are, stay safe. I know many parts of the country are not yet opened up and you hear us all talking about this. Uh, obviously follow what your local experts say, but uh, it is, all 50 states have relaxed some. Canada is relaxing a bunch. Uh, things, I think, by the end of the month will be better, and then even into June. I know some of you are, are at stay-at-home orders like Michigan until the middle of June, and there's no guarantee there's no they'll guarantee. be lifted there in Michigan. I, I won't make any comments at all about that, but to say, except to say to our friends in Michigan, you have our sympathies. Uh, um, so hopefully you all are there. We'll stay in touch. Please go to the blog, rvlifestyle.com. Uh, the newsletter comes out tomorrow with lots more room. If you haven't, lots more news. If you haven't been to the newsletter, there's how you subscribe. You get lots of extra perks when you're a member of our fellow travelers group. Uh, you get the free newsletter every Monday morning. It's always got inside information. And you get all these little discounts uh, with many of our partners. So if you've not yet signed up for our, our RV Lifestyle community, that's how you do it. All now, right. are we going to be back next Sunday? Um, next Sunday, we'll be back. Friday night, for you virtual campfire people, we're taking the night off. We're going to have a real campfire, we hope, somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we're going to take a night off. We've been doing... Two live feeds a week now since this break this came, and uh, we just need to take a break Friday night. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna be a little bit. Uh, we'll be back next Sunday night with another Ask Us Anything same time, but no virtual campfire coming up this Friday. But Everybody's lots more. out there camping. So be on the blog. Camping. Check out the blog. Check out uh, um, you know our our newsletter tomorrow and our videos. Please go see that Florida video that we just put up yesterday. Look at all of our videos. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, and help uh, help us uh, up that subscriber list. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of the weekend to all of our veterans. Um, this is a, a special holiday that uh, we honor you. It's not a holiday to be celebrated. It's a, ho a holiday to honor those of you who served and especially those who gave their lives for freedom. And um, over these last uh, three months, we've all come to understand what freedom we have had in this country and we're, we're getting back again now. Uh, but thank you, uh, all you veterans. Um, have a great Memorial Day weekend, everybody. We love you. We'll see you down the road. And happy trails.